It's comfort limiting VR accessibility. Why the hate for mixed reality? And is VR just for the privileged? All this on CounterPoint. Hey, shout out to Mateo311 and VR Scout for the ideas in this video. Mateo's Why VR Isn't For Everyone topic had 10 minutes of great points and VR Scout's Twitter feed was full of hot takes from followers about VR. Maybe you won't agree with all of it, but it's a great conversation starter. From Mateo's video, one point I had to co-sign was the issue of VR comfort. This is a sensitive topic and divides VR users right down the middle. I'm a smooth locomotion, no comforts assist VR guy, and I like my experience as immersive as possible. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who can't even put on a headset without some kind of negative reaction. Upload VR's David Heaney had a fantastic point when he tweeted, Artificial locomotion, thumbstick movement, makes most people feel sick. Those who don't feel sick are much more likely to become enthusiasts. So, the VR community underestimates the scale of the problem and its significance for the future of VR. Look. If people can't experience your tech without having a negative physical reaction, they won't try again. Here's an anecdotal story. Try to keep count. My wife, her sister, my adult niece, my bro from college, my own sister, and her fiance all bought MetaQuests during the pandemic. That's six units. So as of today, how many are still using those quests? None. Not for gaming, not for Beat Saber, not for anything. I made an entire video about the audience that Meta is aggressively courting. But of the six people I know who bought them, the only two that didn't get ill from the movement in virtual space, well, they simply lost interest. The world reopened. There's evidence that stabilizing frame rates and increasing refresh rates minimizes adverse reactions to VR movement. But I wonder if asking the average person to navigate a three-dimensional space with full scale and immersion and presence, trying to train them to do that without their real world legs, I wonder if by removing that thumbstick controller, or at least the reliance on that, will that make the difference in how people engage with the experience? Well, all I can say is that I know one game that didn't make any of my friends sick, and they all loved it, Walkabout Mini Golf. No traditional thumbstick controls, no high-end graphics, no need for advanced comfort settings. Hmm, imagine that. Hey, shout out to Denny Unger from Cloudhead Games on this next topic. If you're not playing Pistol Whip on every VR platform available, you're missing out. Denny tweeted, Mixed reality is a development stand-in for AR, but at a consumer optics level, it is potentially destabilizing and in generally toxic to VR. You know, that's a really interesting take. Mixed reality kind of changes depending on who you talk to. It could mean the pass-through view of the MetaQuest or Quest Pro where you can still see the real world while still engaging with some kind of digital thing like a movie or even a desktop. Or it could mean something in the wearable tech niche, which is getting more and more popular, like the disruptive NREAL or Vitro One glasses. They're basically giant screens reflected to your eyes behind sunglasses, essentially monitors for your eyeballs. They still need a console or computer or phone to do anything, but the tech is disruptive and catching on. Actually, I own a pair of the NREAL Airs, and as a travel monitor, they're clutch. They're lightweight and functional. Everything that VR and AR eventually want to be. They don't have strong software support yet, but as they are and priced just right, I can see how Denny has a point. The AR that the community dreams about is several years away. Tilt 5 has a lot of that magic, but you still need a bunch of external elements like a PC and the tech mats to make the whole thing work. So while VR does a lot of things better, the job of bringing regular people in by baby steps, uh, they don't do that so well. AR has been around for years on phones and I rarely use mine for more than taking measurements and even that doesn't work that well. So yeah, MR in this form can be considered toxic and destabilizing, but it can also be a fantastic way to get people used to interfacing even more with technology for our real world tasks. Different tools for different jobs, I guess. Play Pistol Whip. VR has the potential to revolutionize education and make traditional classrooms a thing of the past. Can you imagine being able to explore the Great Wall of China or the depths of the ocean from your own home? Affordable VR is sold in a tiny number of countries, either by Meta or Pico. This tiny number of countries pushes away any AAA studio, which pushes away users even where VR is available. The only reason VR is not mainstream is because affordable VR is not being sold worldwide. During lockdown, my favorite, favorite pastime 
last time was Clubhouse on the iPhone. When I wasn't in tech creator circles, I spent a lot of time engrossed by listening to conversations amongst other countries and cultures, politics, social, especially tech. Companies like Microsoft and Apple are investing heavily into places like Africa where the expectation is that we'll see a lot of engineers and programmers in the future. I'd hoped that we'd see Meta bridging the educational and technological gaps between countries by putting affordable Quest headsets in schools. 360 cameras and drone tech was starting to get really cheap. So I figured apps like Wander and learning platforms will be all over VR, making MetaQuest the monster in the VR space. That totally did not happen. VR got more expensive and more exclusive. Where I thought Horizon Worlds would be an amazing place to exchange ideas with people all over the world. It became- Oh my God, we on stage together. I'm grabbing my own butt. How's everybody's evening going? So you're grabbing your Wait, how everybody's night going? I still believe that Meta killed Oculus Go way too early and that there was definitely a place for 3D OF functionality in the education and simulation spaces. The concerns over audience confusion early in the Oculus Quest life were overblown. Maybe giving the audience more credit and more options could have helped in some way with training the world in how to engage with VR. Maybe that would have gone a long way to solve that retention issue Meta is having right now. But that's it. I think I'll do this feature weekly. I just love talking about VR. Thanks so much for coming back and I'll try my best to keep this tribe growing as far as it goes. Life is short, be kind to each other, make a real connection in VR and in the real world. Much love and I'll see you in the future. Show out.